My kids are Bendy, nearly adult, Ava, young teen, and Fritz, young tween. Their dad passed away when Fritz was a baby. I'll cut right to the problem. My sisters and I are going on an overnight trip late this month. With my oldest sister's work schedule, the only time we can go for the foreseeable future is the 29th of this month. This has been planned for several weeks. Bindi announced to me this week that her school is doing a Halloween dance on the 29th. She was so excited and was excitedly planning her costume. I hated to burst her bubble, but I had to tell her she couldn't go. You see, Fritz is severely autistic, exactly what you're probably thinking. He's nonverbal, no eye contact, no toilet training, that sort of thing. This makes him much more difficult to leave with someone than his sisters ever were. I could easily find a sitter for them when they were younger. The only people who will take Fritz outside of our household are his grandparents, who could not watch him that weekend. He also does well with Bendy, meaning she's our only option. Bendy didn't take it well and asked me why Ava couldn't watch him for a few hours while she was at the dance, since Ava had babysat before. Ava is having surgery the Monday before that, nothing major, but she will not be healed enough to deal with one of her brother's meltdowns by Friday. I'm not saying that would happen, but it's always a possibility with him. She can't help, but someone else needs to be there, and that someone will have to be Bendy. She responded by saying she didn't realize her siblings were so much more important and went up to her room scowling. I've tried knocking and calling her, but she keeps sending me straight to voicemail. I get that she's upset and was looking forward to this dance. It's only for juniors and seniors, and the school didn't have it last year thanks to Global Issue. But I'm going to need her to make a small sacrifice for the family right now. I fully intend to make it up to her, but does expecting her to be there for family make me the idiot? One kid has special needs. One kid just had surgery, and you're going out of town? In what world are you not the idiot? You are the idiot. Jesus freaking Christ! Stop putting your parenting responsibilities on your child because you'd rather go out with your sisters on a fun weekend. Your daughter didn't ask to be born. She also didn't ask to parent your son. It's your son. So it's your responsibility to find a sitter for your children. Your daughter is a child who is not qualified to take care of your child or children. You decided to have kids and now you must suffer the consequences. Pay the extra money to find an appropriate sitter to take care of your children. Yup, OP, why can't you make the small sacrifice? Because an overnight trip with your sisters, which you can do anytime you can organize childcare, is a much smaller sacrifice than a high school dance, of which there is a limited number, and when they're done, they're done. You are the idiot. You are leaving a teen overnight with a non-verbal little kid and a young teen recovering from surgery for an unnecessary fun trip for yourself? Ridiculous. I could see if you needed to work or had an emergency yourself, but you just want to have a girl's weekend and want to do it in the most irresponsible way possible. This isn't a be there for your family situation. You have had weeks to procure a reliable adult babysitter with healthcare experience for the two kids that need someone with healthcare experience and have chosen not to do so. You are the idiot. I wouldn't be surprised if your oldest sister went limited or no contact with you when she left home. And quite frankly, you deserve it. Your daughter only gets a limited amount of dances during her high school experience. You have the rest of your life to plan a trip with your sisters. Grow up and learn how to be a proper parent. Forget the dance for a second. You're telling us that Bindi is the only person who can care for Fritz on this particular weekend? That means she has no emergency backup. No one to help if something goes wrong. All of her family members are hours away and you're leaving her with not just Fritz, but a second child who is recovering from surgery. What happens if something goes wrong? My dog sitter requires a local emergency contact in case something happens. You're not even showing your daughter that much courtesy, and she's dealing with a much more challenging situation. You can't go away when all the possible backup babysitters for your son are unavailable. You can't go away when your daughter's recovering from surgery. All three of your kids deserve better than this. The lack of backup is a very good point. I find it concerning that this isn't even ignorance. She's choosing to do this, acknowledging that this is a serious responsibility that not just anyone can do. The whole thing is just so irresponsible. Oh, and how in the world could you have a good time? Under these circumstances, I'd be worrying all night. 
You are the idiot. Your oldest daughter is going to be gone at 18. I own a three bedroom home with a front and a backyard. A couple of months ago, my brother and his girlfriends were having some financial problems and asked me if they could live with me for a few months while they save up for enough to pay first and last month's rent plus security deposit to get a place again. I was hesitant, but they promised me they would do all the chores, including housework, laundry, and yard work, including mowing the lawn. I figured a couple of months of not doing chores would be worth it, especially to get out of the yard work and mow the lawn for the summer. For the most part, it's been okay. They're not quite as diligent as I'd like them to be, but at least the place doesn't get filthy and the lawn gets mowed weekly. Well, last week, my brother Jake sprained his ankle playing basketball and will be on crutches for a few weeks. Grass grows fast this time of year, so I told his girlfriend that it's now her job since he can't do it. She flipped out on me and said I'm a jerk and that mowing the lawn is a guy's job, so I should either do it myself or hire someone for a few weeks. I told her the agreed upon setup was that they would do all these chores, and if he can't, that means it's on her if they want to continue living here free. She huffed and puffed, but eventually did it. Not the best job, but enough. Well, she's been having an attitude lately, which I don't mind since I work 50 hours a week, and I hope it'll motivate them to move out sooner than later. But yesterday, my brother told me it feels like I'm kicking them while he's down. I feel like we were all adults and had an agreed-upon arrangement, but he insisted that I was an idiot, so I would like some neutral party thoughts here. Not the idiot. Chores were a condition of them staying with you for free. He's injured, she is not, so I don't see what the problem is. Women mow the lawn all the time. Having his girlfriend do it is not vindictive at all. It makes you wonder, if they lived in their own house, would girlfriend be mowing the lawn or just let it grow wild until your brother was able to do it again? They're supposed to be a team, but she's complaining about pulling her weight when her boyfriend cannot contribute. Not cool. My sister-in-law is like this. She classifies chores by color. Pink jobs are women jobs. Blue jobs are for men. And purple is both. We made so many jokes about it. She stopped saying it, at least in front of us. You are not the idiot. I am female and love mowing the lawn. How is this kicking them when they're down? Even if she didn't want to do it, they could have paid someone to come do it. So it's actually not as expensive as people think. You are the idiot. She's ridiculous thinking mowing is exclusively for guys. I'm a woman and I do all the yard work in my house and I'm wearing a skirt right now. So it's not like I reject all femininity or anything. That said, these aren't random strangers. They're your family and your brother is injured. I think it's a bit ridiculous to say that because your brother is injured, his girlfriend now has to do all the chores and yard work in a three person home. Unless she doesn't work, that's just a crushing amount of work to put on one person. You could have a little empathy here and agree to take on some smaller tasks like taking out the trash and maybe cleaning the bathroom or whatever chores you hate the least. My ex and I have been divorced for a while after being together for several years. I left her for rather petty reasons, but I'd do it again, honestly. I've since remarried. My ex-wife has full custody of our two daughters. I pay a little bit of child support. My ex hit tough times a couple of years ago but she still would rather have her custody of our daughters. And my daughters have built a life with their mom. No point in making them move. My ex-wife has nothing. Her account was apparently drained due to her parents' medical bills. I told my wife we needed to help her out. So my wife is basically saying I'm having an emotional affair and feels betrayed because despite her saying she didn't want us helping my ex out, I still did. But she literally has to provide for my daughters. No, the three figures a week for child support ain't gonna keep a roof over their heads. So I feel I was justified in paying to keep the lights on and the refrigerator stocked for my daughters. But I think I may be the idiot for going behind your back. I pay $1,500 a month in child support and for five months, I gave her the $2,100 a month for her rent once I found out she got laid off. My wife didn't realize it at first since I just changed how I received my checks from direct deposit and worked it out to where the $2,100 went to her account. But my wife noticed eventually. Edit, my wife and I have combined finances. After paying for her father's medical treatment, X got laid off and took a job at McDonald's. You are the idiot. You have combined finances, which means you just don't give money to whomever you want without your wife's consent. 
If you feel your daughters aren't being cared for properly, then you have to go through legal channels or have an in-depth conversation with your wife. You are the idiot. If you can afford to help her out, you can afford to be paying an appropriate amount in childcare. Your current wife should be grateful that your ex-wife hasn't done so. As for your current wife, she does understand that you have financial responsibility for your kids, right? Now you can pretend that you don't want custody for the kids' sake, but let's not pretend that you and she would be willing to take the kids full time, not to mention the expenses. If your current wife is so irrational that she doesn't get a basic concept like being responsible for your kids, then perhaps it's time for another divorce for some less petty reasons. Everyone's the idiot. I sympathize with you on wanting to support your daughters, and in that sense, you are not wrong. However, going behind your wife's back is an issue. This isn't a decision that one person can make. That being said, there is a more significant issue here. Why is your ex draining everything on her parents' medical bills at the expense of having nothing for her and her daughters? I know this sounds heartless, but how are you so sure that the money you gave her isn't just going to her parents and she will need more money soon? Not the idiot. While it would be ideal to get the wife's approval, she wasn't giving it, and it was for petty reasons. This wasn't so much for the ex, but for your kids. And you dang well know that while you do pay support, that amount is chump change compared to the actual cost of raising kids. Your wife knew you had kids you were responsible for when she married you. Kids cost money. I'd flat out ask if she thinks turning your back on your kids would have been preferable in her eyes. Her answer will tell you more than you might want to know about her. I'm 30 female, and my niece, Lily, young child, had a birthday last weekend. My sister and her husband, 32 female and 33 male, invited me to Lily's birthday party a few weeks ago, and of course I accepted. Lily is not into stereotypical girl things at all. Barbies, dollhouses, princesses, the color pink, she hates all of it. Right now, what Lily loves more than anything is dinosaurs. My sister hates that Lily likes, quote, boy things, and I fought with her about it on multiple occasions. But who says girls can't like dinosaurs? Dinosaurs are rad. Anyway, the week before Lily's birthday party, my sister texts me a list of banned gifts. And of course, on the list were dinosaurs. I knew that if every guest got the same list I did, Lily would have a miserable birthday filled with presents that she was going to hate. I couldn't bear the thought of seeing her so upset on her birthday. So when I went gift shopping, I completely ignored the list and bought her a pretty cool dinosaur toy set. Birthday comes along. Lily is having fun with all her little friends. The adults are out back enjoying some drinks. All is good. The cake comes and goes. A very pink cake with flowers that Lily grimaced at when she saw it. I thought her reaction was funny. My sister did not. And then it's presents time. I will say, for a young child, Lily is very good at hiding her disappointment. She opened up toys like Barbies, tiaras, and magic wands and was extremely gracious about it. Then she got to my gift and couldn't hide her excitement. She ran up and hugged me and said she loved it. Now some of the parents of the kids that were invited were confused. I thought that was banned. And my sister was fuming at what I'd done. After presents, the kids went off to play with them and I saw Lily opening up her dinosaur set for me. A dad of one of her friends came up and asked me why I had gotten that for Lily if it was on the band list. So I explained that Lily doesn't really like stereotypical girl toys, but my sister refuses to let her play with what she likes. The dad went red in the face. I think he and his wife got her a princess something, but I assured him that it wasn't his fault. He couldn't have known. Well, word of my conversation spread. And now my sister is angry with me for making her out to be a terrible mother. I don't think she's a terrible mother. I mean, Lily is a super polite and gracious child. I don't understand why she can't let her daughter play with things she actually enjoys. But now all the parents at Lily's party think she's controlling and weirdly fixated on this. And my sister claims I ruined her credibility with the other parents. I never meant for it to escalate the way it did. It was just an explanation to a confused parent so, am I the idiot? Oh, and the famous band list? Trucks, cars, Hot Wheels, a former interest of hers. Dinosaurs, superheroes, Spider-Man, etc. Robots, anything that involved assembly. So, no Lego, no construction toys, etc. Rockets and space stuff. Anything science-related, really. 
not the idiot. When your sister sent out a list of banned gifts, she ruined her credibility with the other parents. You just confirmed she was controlling and weirdly fixated on forcing her daughter into a mold that just doesn't fit. I'm honestly surprised that none of the other parents questioned this list. Does your sister have a partner? What is their opinion? Has anyone sat down with sister and seriously discussed her concerns and why she desperately needs therapy? Not the idiot. Someone in her family needs to appreciate Lily for who she is and express herself. You are quickly setting yourself up to be someone in her life she can go to and trust, and it's clear she's going to need that moving forward. You didn't get her something inappropriate, just something her mother didn't want her to have so her mother could force her ideals on her. I grew up very similarly. Though my parents were open, the rest of my family tried to force me to be very feminine. Good for you for doing the right thing by Lily. OP, your sister is going to get a wake-up call when your daughter wants nothing to do with her later because she was never allowed to enjoy what she wanted. I've got a little niece who loves dinosaurs too. They absolutely are rad. Keep being the super awesome aunt that you are. My girlfriend and I have lived together one year and been together three. We split shared expenses 60-40 based on our incomes. Unfortunately, my girlfriend's dog got sick. I do not know how it happened, but we luckily caught it in time. And after surgery, my sweet big girl is thriving. However, the surgery and vet bills have cost me almost $3,000. My girlfriend said she only had $280, so I told her to keep it if that's all she had to her name. So I paid $1,500 up front and have been making payments bi-weekly. Well, yesterday, I walked in to see my girlfriend pulling loads of cash from her zippered wallet thing. So I asked about it, and she explained she has been doing the zero-based budget method. So when she gets paid, she pulls any extra out and puts them in a sinking fund envelope. I asked her how long she had been doing this, and she said since we moved in together. I didn't really think twice about it, until she pulled $600 from an envelope labeled vacation. I asked why she only told me she had $280 when she had $600 in that envelope. She said her pet sinking fund only had $280 and that envelope is for taking a trip. I pointed out we have no trip even planned and she said that it didn't matter. That made me angry and I demanded she pays me back for half the surgery. I called her a liar. She claimed she couldn't afford to and I'm an idiot. All her envelopes combined had $2,100. She says I don't get the point of budgeting and sinking funds, and I'm not going to be broke paying for the full bill, and I offered to cover it, so I'm an idiot to demand money now. Maybe I don't get it. Don't get me wrong. I would pay for the surgery all over again to save the dog's life, but I don't think I should have to pay fully if she had money. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You offered to cover it based on the info she told you, but that info was not the full story. She can't be planning for a vacation and expect you to cover her emergencies. I demand she pay half or at minimum 40% since that's what she pays based on your split. And in the future, maybe she needs to put less in a vacation fund and more into the envelope covering her dog. All her envelopes combined had $2,100 and she could only offer up $280 for her own dog. I understand the income difference and I think budgeting is smart but I find it hard to swallow that she could have easily sacrificed some money out of the vacation or trip fund, which you stated wasn't going to be used anytime soon, to help pay for it. Completely agree with you every step of the way, OP. Not the idiot. Ask your girlfriend, if you weren't around or didn't have the money for the vet bills, would she have dipped into her vacation fund to pay for the surgery or just let the dog die? Some people view dogs as just animals or property. Others view dogs as their family or children. How much you're willing to spend will differ dramatically depending on how you see and value that dog. Her answer should enlighten you on what her priorities are.